Today I'm speaking with Austin Alsh about his long-term mission um, through the World Race, where he visited 11 countries in 11 months and shared the gospel. Uh, you may remember him from a Susquehanna Express that we did almost exactly two years ago at God's Call, where he first shared his plan to go on the World Race. So now we're here today to follow up on that story. Thank you for coming and sharing a little bit of your time, your very limited time that you have before you go on to your next step in missions. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So can you share briefly what type of mission work that you did during the World Race? Uh, really, we did all sorts of mission work. Our, our main objective was to, to partner with the missions that are currently in place, not necessarily do what they are doing, but to help them facilitate their vision long term. So we did anything from helping to clean up um, and do some construction or painting things, general maintenance, because they don't have the time to necessarily do those things, mm -hmm. or actually doing what the missions uh, organizations do, playing with kids, doing VBS programs, speaking at churches, and, and any number of things, um, even as far as uh, we've dug a grave once. <laughs> it, it, from the bazaar to, to the mundane, we pretty much do whatever's needed in the area. So... Um, as you visited 11 different countries and were immersed in the culture, uh, how did that change your perception of the world and your view of the global church? A commonality that has been throughout each of the, the countries that I've seen is the idea of joy. Um, how the people that we've met, we've been in some pretty poor places. Um, people live in shacks made out of trash. Um, and just whole families in areas no bigger than maybe our, you know, a, a bathroom or a small bedroom. And to see the joy that they have for our Lord and Savior, especially when worshiping, regardless of their circumstance, mm -hmm. has been amazing. I mean, you see people who literally have nothing, and they, they praise God two, three, four, five hours a day sometimes because they want to, because they're joyful for what the Lord has given them. And... I think that's something that's so beautiful as part of the, the global body of Christ, that there's so much joy that is lacking in different areas, especially back in America, because I think we're so distracted by so many things. We, we don't see the joy because we have other stuff cluttering the way in our lives. So to see that joy that they have and just truly wanting to, to praise our Savior and worship Him was just it was really amazing. How do you think, um, what do you think is a way that we could bring that back to America, that we all could have that joy that they have with having so little? Um, I think the best way is really self-discipline because it's hard here because we have so many things vying for our attention. Mm -hmm. We're always connected in some way, whether that's internet, cell phone, you know, iPads, anything. It's just so many things are vying for our attention. We lose focus of what this life really is about, mm -hmm. which is about living for the Lord and, and serving Him. And so... It really comes down to, do you have the self-discipline to carve out time in your day for the Lord? To say, you know, God, you made me. My life is yours. I want to give back to you. So being able to, you know, turn off the cell phone, find a quiet place, just talk to God, pray to Him, be in His Word, and just to be able to praise Him just because He created you and He's your Father. If we could do that, then I think we could get back to the point of knowing what true joy comes from, which is from the Lord Himself. Have you seen that they do that mostly through prayer or through biblical study? Really in worship. I mean, okay. as far as they would start a, a service off with worship and end it with worship and have a small message in between, but the majority of the time it was, it was praising and singing and standing and hands in the air and jumping around. However they praise and worship their Lord, that was what the majority of the service was because they truly enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean... It's interesting to think that we call our church services worship, but sometimes there is only a very small amount of time allotted to actually just being in awe. Um, so that is an interesting perspective that you gleaned. Um, what are some ways that your church has supported you? My church has been amazing at supporting me this past year and my entire life. They're the ones who really helped make me who I am today through the youth group, through the mission trip that I did um, have done throughout the years with them. They have been my prayer warriors, and they have supported me in, in so much prayer, and I felt them for prayers of protection and prayers of strength. As I, I went through the, the 11 countries, 
I, there were definitely trials and times where I could have been seriously injured, but the Lord had you know, saved me from those things. So they are huge warriors in prayer and just supporting me financially in any way that they can, helping me with fundraisers and, and just being there for me and just knowing that I have their support, that I have a church body, a family who supports me back home was just hugely beneficial to me because without that support, you, you can feel alone. But I knew I had that back home, and it was just very, very welcoming to know that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there one moment on your trip that you are able to look back and say that it was significant and really strengthened your faith? Absolutely. Um, it was in India, and we were working at a, a place called Sarah's Covenant Home. And it's a home for mentally and, and physically handicapped children. In India, they are considered outcasts. They're the lowest of the low, and so they're just not taken care of. And it was in that place that I was challenged the most because I'm not comfortable around out, around mentally and physically handicapped children, and they were there, and that was our that was our service to them that month is just to be with them. And so every day, I prayed that God would let me see, let me see them with His eyes, mm-hmm. and love them with His love because I knew mine was not enough. And so. The first day I just kind of latched onto one of the children because there was 105 of them and there was eight of us. Mm. So to cope, I latched onto one little girl and her name was Winnie. And the Lord worked such a, a work of love in me that it was, it was my favorite part of this year because I've never felt that kind of love before for my little girl. And it was just a beautiful gift that he was able to give to me and, and I wouldn't have it any other way. It sounds like you've had many amazing moments and that um, God really was able to open your heart and open your eyes so that you could see how he sees. Um, And I thank you for uh, just discerning what God wanted in your life and for continuing that even now. Absolutely. Thank you. So if you would like to learn more about Austin's trip, you can check out his blog at the bottom of the screen, or you can check out my blog for more on the world race at Susquehanna. Express.blogspot.com.